Have you ever heard of a super solid? A super solid. Yeah, like um, a material that can be both a solid and a liquid at the same time. Well, that sounds a little bit like uh, science fiction, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, it does. But it's actually a real thing. It exists in the quantum realm. And uh, scientists have been trying to figure this out, like to actually create one for decades. Well, you know, they've been on this quest for so long, and it turns out that it's light. They've made a super solid out of light. Wow. Yeah, it is really pretty wild. There's uh, Dimitris Tripogiornos. He's from the National Research Council, CNR. And he said, we actually made light into a solid. That's pretty awesome. And I think he's right. So for this deep dive, let's unpack this new form of matter. Like, how did they make it? And why is it so important? We're looking at an article from March 6th, 2025, that describes it. So yeah. maybe we should start with, like, what exactly I swoops a super solid? Well, it's a bit of a paradox, right? It's got the rigid structure of a solid, like you would see in a crystal lattice. But it also has this ability to flow without any resistance, kind of like a superfluid. So it's like a crystal, but the atoms can move around freely. That's a great way to think about it, yeah. It's like you have this rigid structure, but the components within it can just move around without any friction at all. That is really strange to imagine. Oh, definitely a mind bender. So has this idea, this concept of a super solid, been around for a while? Oh, yeah. Scientists have been talking about this theoretically since the 1950s. And for a long time, they thought they might find super solid behavior in helium-4. This is a type of helium, you know, that's cooled down to really, really low temperatures. Uh, okay. Like fractions of a degree above absolute zero. Wow. Yeah. There was even a little bit of excitement back in 2004 when some researchers thought they'd seen it. Oh, really? Yeah. But it turned out to be something else entirely. <laughs> so, you know, this quest for a real super solid has continued for decades. And now they've done it with light. Exactly. They've completely changed the game. Instead of trying to force atoms into this bizarre state, they thought, hey, what about light? That's so cool. So how did they actually do it? How do you make a super solid out of light? Okay, so imagine this. They took laser light, regular laser light, and they shone it onto a special type of semiconductor material. It's called gallium arsenide. But here's the catch. This material was etched with these tiny, tiny ridges. Like microscopic ridges. Yeah, exactly. And when the light interacted with the semiconductor at those ridges, it created these quasi-particles called polaritons. Polaritons. And the article mentioned them being like part light, part matter. Yeah, it's pretty wild, right? So when the light hits the semiconductor, it interacts with the electrons in the material. And this interaction creates these things called excitants. It's kind of like an electron gets excited, jumps to a higher energy level, and leaves behind this positively charged hole. Okay, so you have these excitants. Right. And the excitons and the photons, those are the particles of light. They kind of couple together, become entangled. They become entangled. Huh? And that's how you get a polariton. So it has properties of both light and matter, which is pretty amazing. So they've got these polaritons. But how do they get them to form a super solid? Those tiny ridges we talked about, they play a crucial role. Think of them like microscopic traps. They basically force the polaritons into these very specific positions. And this confinement is what causes the polaritons to spontaneously organize themselves into this periodic pattern. Oh, like a crystal lattice. Exactly. And that's where the solid-like aspect of the super solid comes from. Okay, so that's the solid part. But what about the superfluid part? Mm. How do those light matter particles flow without any resistance? This is where it gets even more interesting, you see. Even though they are confined, the polaritons exhibit this amazing property, zero viscosity. Zero viscosity. Mm -hmm. So they can flow freely. Absolutely. They can move through this lattice without losing any energy. It's like they're lighting through space. And this is really significant because it's the first time anyone has ever made a super solid entirely out of light. And how did the researchers actually prove that they'd done it? Like, what did they see that confirmed it? They looked at the density of the polaritons, and they saw what they called a distinct modulation in space. Distinct modulation. Yeah, it's kind of like a fingerprint that tells you, hey, there's crystallization happening here. The polaritons are arranging themselves in that ordered structure. Okay. But they also saw something else. Coherence. Coherence. Yeah. And coherence in this context means that the polaritons are all moving together in sync, like a single unbroken wave. It's a hallmark of superfluid behavior. So they had the solid structure, the crystal lattice, and they had the frictionless flow. It was undeniable. They had created a super solid from light. This is huge. 
But why is this so important? What does it mean for physics or for us? Well, first of all, it well, first of all, it opens up this whole new way of exploring quantum matter. You see, to study atomic supersolids, you need these incredibly low temperatures, and that's super difficult to do and very expensive. But with this light-based approach, you might be able to study them at much higher temperatures. Even at room temperature. Potentially. And if that's possible, it would completely revolutionize research in this field. That would be amazing. Imagine studying this bizarre quantum state without needing all that specialized equipment. It's mind-blowing. And it could help us understand not just supersolids, but also how quantum matter changes from one state to another. It's fundamental stuff. And what about practical applications? Are there any? Oh yeah, potentially huge ones. Imagine being able to transport energy with zero loss. Think about how efficient our electronics could become. That would be incredible. Or new types of quantum computers, ones that take advantage of these unique properties of supersolids. It's really exciting stuff. It does sound like something out of science fiction. But the article did say that this is all still very early stage research. Right. For now, these supersolid polaritons only exist in a controlled lab setting. But who knows where this could lead in the future? The potential is enormous. It's amazing what they can do with light now, isn't it? Like turning it into a solid and a liquid at the same time, that's mind boggling. Yeah, and you have to give them credit for the creativity. Using light to create this exotic state of matter it's genius. It really makes you think about the nature of reality, you know. We think of light as this everyday thing, but then you see what it can do in the quantum realm. It's like a whole other world. And it really makes you wonder what else is possible. Exactly. If we can make light behave this way, what other seemingly impossible things might we discover in the future? The possibilities are endless. It's really exciting to think about, and it just shows the power of quantum physics to shape our world in ways we can't even imagine yet. Absolutely. It's a frontier of science that's just beginning to be explored. It definitely makes you appreciate the weirdness and wonder of the universe we live in, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. It just shows that there's so much more to discover out there. Definitely. So much more to discover.